Okay, welcome to this first clip on a series of clips on the pivot table functionality in Excel. It is a slightly more advanced functionality, but it can save you a huge amount of time because what you would normally want to do is try and sum up things. So after I've done your, all your coding, you would want to know, for instance, in this case, how many um, tokens of the intercausative come from American English and how many come from British English. You may want to know what the distribution is between active and passive uses, and you may want to know what the distribution is between active and passive uses by variety. So there are multiple ways of doing this, and the commonest or the easiest way to do it is via the sorting and filtering function. But that's also very tedious, because what it essentially means is that you use the um, filter function. So suppose I wanted to know how many of my hits come from American English, then I could filter American English, and that's 42. And then I copy that information to a separate uh, document, right? So American English um, tokens, we have 42. And then I could do the same for um, British English. And we see there is 29. Right. And if I now wanted to do a calculation or a, a cross tabulation or accounting of uh, the distribution of voice by variety, I would just continue with um, filtering the voice column. So currently we have British English active as a filter. So now I'm selecting the active in British English. And then I have this here, British English, um, active voice, and we have, okay, so let's check, go back to our filter. Okay, so here's the first problem. We can't really, um, the information on how that was filtered is gone. So I have to go back here, select that and select it again. And then the numbers prop up again, that's 19. And then I go for the passive, select that, unselect the active. So we have 10 passives in British English. And for American data, we can select American English, unselect the British one. We have nine for the passive. And for the active, we can do the same thing. I mean, we could potentially do subtraction here already, but there you go. Uh, okay. Active. And we are 33. Okay, so that is one way that you can do it, but Excel is not designed to do that. And we saw that with the numbers that disappeared once we switch documents. If you have multiple filters selected, then that number may disappear. And also you would have to update that at every stage and if you discard a data and whatnot, that is pretty uh, stative. So, and you already saw that it takes a long time to do that. So, but the power of Excel is that you can use the pivot functionality that does this cross tabulation for you. It counts things for you um, by certain parameters. So let's um, talk about the very basic principle of doing that. I'm just uh, going to unselect or un clear all the filters. If you are anywhere in a table, um, and if you have inserted a table at the beginning of your data analysis, then um, that will be pretty straightforward. You go to the insert tab and pick the leftmost item that says pivot table. Then you get this dialog that um, tell, where Excel tells you, I've guessed the range that you want to cross tabulate. And if you are in a table, then that should be your um, data set. And the second one is choose where to place the pivot table. Um, by default, Excel asks you to do that into a new worksheet. And that's what I would recommend uh, very strongly because now you're doing a summation or an aggregation of your data that should be kept separate from your raw data. So we select uh, OK. Then we have a new sheet that opens down here. And I'm going to enlarge that slightly so that's easier to read. And then on the left, we have um, a, uh, an area with the pivot table fields that might look slightly differently if you work on Windows, but the general principle will be um, the same. <laughs> 
also can enlarge that as well. Now with the pivot table fields, these are the column names and these would be the variables that you want to cross tabulate. Then we have four fields down here. I'll come to the filter at the end. And most crucially, we have the columns, the rows, and then what goes into your table, what should be counted. So if we wanted to count the distribution by variety, we can just um, click on variety, drag, hold and drag, and sort of drag that to the rows, right? So we're replicating what we have on the right here. And um, what you want to count is how many of each are in the different uh, values of variety. So we can drag variety over here to the values as well. So that will count um, the number of times that AE occurs in that column, column and the number of times that BE occurs in that column. So here we have the same numbers that we got through filtering, but in a much quicker way. So if I also wanted to do a cross tabulation by uh, another variable like active and passive, then I just look for that um, variable voice, click, hold, drag over to the columns. And there we are. So we have our data in um, that format very, very quickly without having to filtering and running the risk of getting numbers wrong or getting the columns wrong or the um, rows wrong and, and so on. For beginners and in pivot tables, that some of these things can be a bit um, confusing, and we'll have a uh, we'll address them in another clip um, that usually pertains to things like numbers and the difference between numeric values in a ca uh, column and uh, character values in a column. But for the time being, the general principle um, is the same. And then. The final one that we have here is the field of filters. How can you use that? Well, the data that we have is from four corpora, uh, two per variety, uh, because one part comes from the 1960s, that's a different corpus, and the other parts come from the 1990s, that's also different uh, corpora. So I suppose you wanted to know very quickly um, if uh, what sort of exclude data perhaps from the um, earlier corpus, then you could use that year information, right? So back in our master here, we have a year 1991 and 1961 and so on. So you can use that uh, variable to filter. So I click, hold and drag it to the filter. And then I can just click on that little arrow here and say, okay, I don't, right now I just want to know how much do we have in 1991. Uh, so I exclude the data from the 1960s and Excel will already update that for me. So if I were to do that kind of calculation, I would have to do this type of cross tabulation all over again with the same amount of time and the same um, probability of error perhaps. Okay, so we'll have a series of clips on pivot tables because they're very, very powerful, um, but they also need a bit of getting used to, but they will save you a lot of time. Okay, as I was editing all right, one final remark. Um, as I was editing this series, I realized that there is at least one token that I coded as an intercausative that is not an intercausative. Well, I suppose that happens when you try to speed code data um, for a tutorial some dark December Sunday afternoon. But I wasn't trying to give you a fully fledged analysis of the intercausative, uh, but rather to make a point. But we can use this error to illustrate the power of pivot tables. So even though they are um, slightly more work in the beginning, they're actually very powerful. So I can now um, go in here and say example no, that's a no example. Um, I can remove that line or I should be removing that line to the discarded table. But let's, um, for the sake of illustration, leave it as here. So this example, hoping to charm them into writing lessons is not an intercausative because writing lesson is a compound um, rather than writing being the verbal complement to um, hoping to charm somebody. Now, if I change um, this one here and I go back to my uh, pivot table, 
This will not show up um, immediately, but you will have to update your pivot table. Um, so if I had removed that line to the discarded field, then I would um, go right click on the pivot table and say refresh, and that would update the numbers. But because I haven't discarded this line yet, I can use the example um, column where I indicate yes, no, I can use that as a filter. So I can drag that to the filters and check with examples, uncheck the N for no examples, and that would update um, the numbers. Right, so that's a more straightforward way of doing things than if you would have to uh, check, okay, so that non-example is from American English and it's 1991 fiction and it's an active to update that one cell in your external manually created um, cross tabulation. So even though that might be a bit more effort in the beginning to learn what pivot tables are and how they work, they're definitely worth it, especially if you work with larger data sets and do not immediately remove every single instance that happens to be a non-example that you clean out um, at a later stage.